What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to bring you guys another video and this topic is going to be on why aliens are not wild betas. This is a topic that I thought about making a video on a while back and despite all the information that is available on Google, I still frequently see people refer to these as wild betas. And in a sense, I can understand why. They are typically labeled as wild betas hybrid, so a lot of people who are new to the hobby get maybe a little confused or maybe the definition of a while is a type of beta so I'm gonna go ahead and go over certain traits and definitions so that people have a clear understanding first let's define what a wild beta is wild betas or betas that have or had existed in the wild specifically through the natural process of evolution that does not involve human intervention now I want to make that last part clear because there are actually animals that exist in the wild but are once domesticated such as horses pigs, and dogs. So besides from those reintroduced animals, I should be able to find any type of wild betas in the wild, as long as they're not extinct. Another reason why alien betas are not considered wild betas is because they always come in different colors. Aliens are typically sold in colors such as copper, green, blue, and gray. In one of my previous video titled Identifying True Wild Embellus, all wild betas in Splendid Complex only come in metallic green. And because they are genetically homozygous for both metallics and iridescence, they should also breed true. Okay, so let's go over certain traits that aliens have that are actually more in line with domestic betas than they are with wild betas. The first one is that aliens tend to have spread iridescence. Spread iridescence refers to a mutation that causes the iridescence on the betas to be more widespread than what normally occurs. This mutation is actually really common in domestic betas, but not as common in wild betas. The other trait is called a full mask. A full mask is also a type of spread iridescence, but it occurs around the head. You see, in almost all wild betas, there is always areas in the body, particularly the head, where there isn't any iridescence. This is most noticeably seen in Siam orientalis. Another iridescence mutation that aliens tend to have is that they have extra thick iridescence. Extra thick iridescence is the reason why aliens always look good no matter what condition they are kept in. And it's also one of the reasons why they're so popular. True wild betas tend to not have thick iridescence. That means that when they are distressed or nervous, they might actually lose a lot of their colors. This is most noticeable in Smeridina guitars, where they naturally have thinner layers of iridescence compared to their metallics. Because of this, people who bought their first wild betas often complain that they were given the wrong fish or that their fish is a female. Now, aliens are unique in that they do have traits that are very typical of wild betas. So let's go ahead and go through them. The one traits that aliens tend to have that almost all wild betas always have is a two split raids on the caudal fin. You see, the mutation for multiple split rays has been heavily selected in domesticated betas. This is because people want their show betas to have a bigger spread when they're flaring. Here is a caudal fin of a mahachai showing the same trait. Pretty much your wild fish must have this trait. Let's take a look at a domesticated type and see how many caudal rays does he have. However, many alien betas are beginning to show this trait too. Check this one out. The other traits that I like to mention is the typical small head and the long streamlined bodies. This contributes aliens into giving them that wild type beta look. Alright, so that's pretty much gonna be it guys. There are a few things that I actually want to talk about when it comes to keeping aliens, such as genetic defects, deformities, and an overall weak immune system. This all leads to why I actually don't keep aliens that much anymore. They all seem to kind of get sick very easily and doesn't look like they have a long lifespan. 
a lot of newbies really like keeping an alien as their first wild beta and I can obviously see why I mean they're really good looking probably some of the best looking betas out there but you're gonna be really disappointed when you find out that your fish all of a sudden got fin rot like three months after you got it I'd rather have people keep a Smeradina or an Imbellus as their first wild beta you have much higher success rate and you just overall have a better time 